Hey guys, it's Rahim. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment, personal development and how to gain financial freedom. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what is really, really close into my mind and uh, something that I don't normally share this and I don't like sharing it, but I think sharing this would help me help you understand the reason why I was broke. I'm going to share with you the reason why I was broke in my 20s and what I've done to actually overcome that madness to become financially independent. So if you really want to learn about how not to stay broke and become financially independent, this video is for you. You see, talking about money or finances is a taboo subject, especially when it comes to ethnic minorities like ourselves or, or, or people that are looking to um, uh, look after a family. It's like, you know, walking in a, in a mine where there's so many miles planted everywhere. You know, you'd wanna go through the mines, but yet scared to try to mine the mines to ensure you eliminate the explosion. And uh, you keep dodging them only to end up stepping on one of them that would really get you to explode. Um, that's how it felt like um, uh, talking about money, but uh, talking about being financially free or actually um, the reason why lots of people are broke because they don't want to talk about money. They don't want to talk about their expenses. They don't want to talk about how much they're making, how much they're earning simply because um, they just don't want to care about it. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to share with you. My personal experience, I hope that will relate to you so you can use it to actually get you to financial freedom. So the number one reason why I was broke is lack of budgeting. Um, what I used to do is basically I don't track my income and expenses and I was just spending the money, spending and spending, thinking that, oh, it would go away. It's thinking that, okay, if I spend money, I feel good. I feel really, really nice. You know, I buy these expensive things, buy trainers, shoes and all that. So I was just spending my, but I did not have a budget. I did not have something that I needed to work for or work into to get me where I wanted to go. So if you're one of those, maybe it's about time to start looking at how you can budget. How much do you want to spend a week? How much do you want to spend a month? How much do you want to spend a day? How can you literally minimize your budget in order to be able to have a bit more money left over for maybe savings or something like that. Maybe thinking how do you determine your budget? You determine your budget by literally going through your financial statement, what I call your bank statement for most of you. See what you're spending your money on. Are you spending your money on something that doesn't add value? Like for myself, it's clothing. I used to spend lots of money in clothing, trainers and jeans and obviously going to expensive restaurants and all that sort of thing, going clubbing most of the time. So these are the things I was spending my money on. And I was subscribing to things that I don't really, really use, like Sky, um, uh, things like that. So it wasn't really adding any value to me. So what I ba basically did is to retract myself from it and, and started spending in the things that really add value to me. And the second thing I was doing, the reason, one of the reasons why I was really, really broke is high debt. So I used to spend all everything I earn basically and then I go for my credit card so basically I accumulated credit card debt and obviously I went to the bank to get a loan and, uh, and because I have so many financial obligations to pay if I have subscriptions I have membership stuff to do I have to go and um, pay pay to run my car for example I used to have a um, a, a car that insurance was really really expensive as well so I used to dip into my credit cards in order for me to able to maintain my lifestyle well what I was doing at that point is trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not sure if you've heard about this word. Like I wanted to be the same as all my, um, all the people I was hanging around with by literally having a nice car, having a beautiful girl, having a nice, amazing trainers. So basically that then lured me into taking further and further de debt and which wasn't a pleasure thing to actually share with you. But I thought it's important I share this because it's my experience. I don't really want you to go exactly the same way I did. Um, I learned it um, uh, by mid-twenties, I think. Um, I realized that maybe I wanted to stop take accumulating debt. Now, I'll explain this for you. There are two types of debt. We have good debt and bad debt. So I was accumulating bad debts. The debts by buying trainers, buying shoes, going on holidays, parties. Those are bad debts because it wasn't bringing me any money. It wasn't making me anything. Whereas good debt is a debt where you can, you can take the debt and use that debt to buy appreciating assets 
or to buy businesses that would bring you recurring income or educating yourself for example that would potentially get you to start bringing money into your own life so that's what i started doing the third thing that really was getting me broke is inadequate savings i hated savings because I, I was really really not patient basically because watching my money grow slowly it was so hard i'm thinking oh this is waste of time and then and then obviously i wasn't i wasn't really really inspired of doing it because it takes time for you to save a lot of money because i wasn't <laughs> saving a lot right and uh, it gets me to fall um, behind and then if there's emergency family call me back home wanting money i haven't got it because i didn't have that emergency funds to help literally um, and get me to help whoever needs or perhaps start my investment journey but the fourth and most important thing that really really get me to become broke is impulsive purchases right i will see something online maybe a nike trainers came out and a adidas trainers came out i get that impulsive buying i want to go and buy spend imp impulsively without even considering my financial lim limitation i used to go places like selfridges if you live in london or if you know selfridges and um, or john lewis where all these middle class people go right i don't even care i remember when they're looking at a trainer that was i think it's about 300 pounds back then i was like whoa that trainer is nice i just went and bought it right i didn't even think we ever got the money i got a credit card right i just pulled my credit card out buy it if anybody knows selfridges in oxford street that was the selfridges i went to because i used to work not far from from um selfridges so basically literally i just went there bought that trainer i came home i only wear it maybe about three or four times i don't wear it again because i had my favorite trainers that i like to wear so i had that behavior what i tend to do to change that is to stop traveling with my cards right because i used to have my cards with me in my pocket if i'm going to shops to to do window shopping i don't take my cards okay i literally leave them at home i go and see what was there just to come get my comfortability in but i never ever start um using my cards there so i cut that down bit by bit and then that then allows me to kind of stop impulsive spending and the fifth thing that really really also put me into financial problems being broke was lack of financial education. So you, you may be thinking, what, Raheem, lack of financial education? As an accountant, and, you know, because I, 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 was, I was working as an accountant and graduated for, from uni. It's all about finances. But here's the thing, when I went to uni, I wasn't taught personal finance. I wasn't taught how to manage my own expenses. I wasn't taught about how how to understand and manage my own money. So all I thought about how I can help manage corporations' money, how I can manage corporations' money, how I can get them to save money. But it's not personal, so I wasn't able, I wasn't smart enough, I would say, to use that skill or knowledge as a transferable skill. So I'm working as an accountant, but I wasn't managing my finances. I just think, oh, I'm gonna get paid next month, so why not? smash it so i used to do all that but what then what then really really triggers me is working as an accountant one day i was on the shop floor i saw my manager we called him vp back then asking someone his junior way way junior i think he was a sales analyst to borrow him money i'm thinking you are our vp you must be earning a lot of money why are you still borrowing money where is that money gone and then I, I then overheard him say, you know, I spend, I spend it all um, uh, um, on the weekend going out. And uh, I had to pay some for my mortgage. I had to pay some for my car leases. Literally, I've got nothing left. And then I realized, whoa, it's not a degree. It's not being an accountant. It's not being a clever, educated person. That doesn't translate to being someone who knows how to manage their finances. So you could be an accountant, you could be a lawyer, you could be anything you may be, but because you're not educated on how to manage your own finances, you will struggle drastically. For me, that, that was an epiphany moment because I realized that if that guy who's earning 50,000 pounds could not manage my, their, their money, and I'm on about, I think 19 to 20,000 pounds back then, and uh, if I can't manage my money, there's no difference between me and that person. So I realized that it's not about how much you earn, it's about how much you're able to put aside after you, you receive your take-home um, investment. So I started doing that, I started budgeting, I, I, I started stopping buying things that I don't need to buy, and then I started savings, I, I reduced the debt I make, and then obviously I stick to my budget. That then was able to transform me in a way that I was able to put money aside, watch that money grow, for few months and then use that money then start investing in appreciating assets that generates me passive income here's the thing 
has any of these things resonate with you are you one of those who does one of these things i've just hi highlighted and uh, has that really stopped you from getting to where you want to go if you are now is the time to take that leap you know make your financial situation your duty responsibility and obligation i really hope this video has been helpful if this video has been helpful smash the subscribe button because i share property investment tips personal development and how to gain financial freedom i look forward to sharing next video thank you